Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent discovery of potentially two supermassive black holes on the collision course. We're going to talk a little bit more about why this is important and most importantly why it might never really happen. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So you probably remember that a few years ago uh, the scientific community was super excited when two smaller so-called solar mass black holes collided and we were able to detect their gravitational waves from all the way here on Earth. And although that event was quite exciting and definitely something that taught us a lot about the universe, it wasn't really as exciting as two supermassive black holes colliding. So all of the black hole collisions we've seen so far involved really, really small in terms of size uh, black holes. And even mass-wise, they are usually only about 30 masses of the sun. And But in terms of size, like this one right here, that's about 100 masses of the sun, as you can see, um, is only a fraction of the size of our own moon. So uh, these are really interesting objects, but now that we've seen a lot of these, and we know they happen quite regularly, they're maybe not as exciting as seeing something even larger. In comparison, a supermassive black hole, such as the one we have in the middle of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star, as you can see, dwarfs everything completely. This object would be even larger than our own sun, and if we were to place this in the middle of our own solar system, it would reach to uh, roughly around the orbit of Mercury. So these objects are a lot more exciting, but their collisions are even more exciting. Because, first of all, the orbiting supermassive black holes would produce a lot of gravitational waves, and they would be able to tell us more about what's happening in that part of the region by sending uh, waves that are somehow disturbed on the path. At the same time, uh, the actual collision, if it occurs, would create such a tremendously powerful um, gravitational wave that it would dwarf everything we've detected so far. It would be at least a million times stronger, suggesting that it could potentially have some major um, effects on, um, well, actually our planet as well. There's a paper I've discussed previously where we realized that gravitational waves actually do affect matter around us permanently. So maybe there's something to worry about as well, but not before we discover actual uh, supermassive black holes that are about to collide. And the recent paper that you can find in the description below talks about a discovery of two supermassive black holes on a collision course. In other words, the scientists behind this paper were able to detect two galaxies that combine together whose supermassive black holes are now sort of circling around one another and will potentially, eventually, collide. But here's the thing though. There's a very prominent, um, I guess you can call it a hypothesis, but it's also a bit of a concern for scientists. It's known as the final parsec problem. And this problem refers to the idea that it's kind of difficult to explain at first. So, okay, let's imagine two black holes that are orbiting around one another really, really far away, like super far away. As a matter of fact, the ones we've just discovered are a good example, at a distance of roughly around a thousand light years away from each other. So as they orbit around one another, there's a lot of matter in between them. There are stars, there's dust, there's all kinds of material that each of these black holes is going to be uh, interacting with and throwing out of the system, or maybe absorbing. And as they do that, the distance between them starts falling and they eventually move closer and closer to one another. But at some point, there is going to be very little stuff left between them. And the scientists believe that this distance is usually roughly around 3 light years or 1 parsec. This is known as the final parsec problem because at this point, there is nothing else to throw away from the galaxy. And so there is no way for these two black holes to start moving closer to one another. In other words, there is nothing else they can... Um, used to lose the gravitational energy to come closer together. They're kind of stuck at this distance and they're going to be orbiting around one another for a very long time. And because they're kind of far from each other, they're not actually producing any of the gravitational waves that would usually um, kind of help them get closer together. So there's no gravitational wave, there's no material, there's no way for them 
to move closer to one another. And because of this, scientists today believe that um, discovering two supermassive black holes much closer to one another, or even colliding with one another, would most likely prove this idea wrong. But scientifically, or at least in terms of the actual theories, we believe that it's very difficult for two supermassive black holes to collide. And so, for a very long time, scientists have been now looking to find these mysterious supermassive black holes at an either closer distance or hopefully collide with one another so we can put an end to this um, idea and also this kind of a unproven hypothesis that suggests that supermassive black holes just can't physically collide. But I did, however, mention this paper right here, and in this paper, they do explain that this discovery is not going to help us answer this. Unfortunately, the two black holes that we've discovered are really far away from each other. The distance here is roughly around 1000 light years, so it will take them approximately 2.5 billion years before they even come close to each other to the point of collision. So we don't have time to wait, and instead, um, the scientists behind this paper decided to um, bring some help and do some simulations and find out when we could possibly discover a collision of two supermassive black holes. So they ran simulations and they ran statistical analysis and discovered that we expect there to be uh, approximately 100 or so supermassive black holes within the distance where we can detect their collision and maybe even detect their gravitational waves as they orbit around one another and create these gravitational waves. But we haven't really seen anything yet. At the same time, they expect at least one such collision to occur within the next five years. And this is actually the important part of this paper. If the prediction is that within five years we should see at least one supermassive black hole collision, it means that if, I guess by 2030 or within the next 10 years or 15 years, we don't detect anything, it means that the so-called final parsec problem is a real problem. In other words, supermassive black holes cannot physically collide and they can either somehow have a head-on collision, if it's by accident or just through sheer interaction with matter around them, or just end up constantly spiraling around one another, constantly orbiting around one another, and create these unusual uh, effects, but not really have an actual collision. So maybe they'll create something that looks similar to the picture here, with very, very bright quasar-like conditions, with a lot of interaction of matter, with really bright astrophysical jets, but unfortunately not an actual collision. However, if we do discover something in the next five years, and it's a very, very large explosion, and obviously very large source of gravitational waves. In that case, we're going to be pretty certain that they do collide, that the uh, final parsec problem is not really correct and we need to revise it in some way, and that there is at least one thing that we're wrong about when it comes to black holes, because a lot of other things uh, we seem to have been pretty correct about. Now, whether we will be able to detect a supermassive black hole collision or not, only time will show. For now, though, we're just going to keep looking, keep studying these unusual objects, and most importantly, keep analyzing their unusual effects and the effects of gravitational waves on various matter uh, right here on Earth. If you'd like to find out what possible effects they do have, check out the video I made previously, it's somewhere above my head. But also come back in the future because there's going to be a follow-up video where I'm going to talk about another unusual galaxy where these supermassive black holes do actually defy our understanding of the universe. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who loves learning about space, sciences, and of course black holes, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, potentially support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And check out some of the other videos I made about black holes previously. Some of them you might be surprised about. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.